Hello and welcome! In this video we will take a look at the ThinkPad X60, which is one of my favorite ThinkPad models, not only due to its compact size. It does so happen that I have two of them, one with the weakest processor available and another with the top of the line option. So what is the real world performance difference between these two machines? Let's find out! Enjoy the video! First of all, let's have a look at the ThinkPad X60, which was released in 2006 as the predecessor of the X41. The ThinkPad X60 was made by Lenovo, but it still has the IBM logo present. While being extremely compact, the X60 has a lot of ports to offer. Beginning on the right side, with a Firewire port, two USB, a headphone and microphone jack, as well as a modem port and the power jack. On the left side there's one more USB port, a VGA out, an Ethernet port, an SD card slot, as well as a PCI MCA slot. This laptop is roughly the size of a netbook, but it has much stronger hardware and an extreme amount of I.O., even compared to bigger machines. To step things up a notch, you can use the corresponding docking station, which adds four more USB ports, as well as VGA, serial and parallel, another headphone and microphone jack, and modem as well as Ethernet. It also adds an optical drive. What I also like about the ThinkPad X60 is that it is one of the last ThinkPads with a 4x3 aspect ratio display. This ThinkPad was meant to get some work done. While this is not the perfect aspect ratio for media consumption, documents and web pages are meant to be scrolled vertically instead of horizontally. At the same time, this display format leads to a more ergonomic design overall. It has very small edges around the display and almost non-existing edges on the keyboard, while at the same time providing enough space on the palm rest for a better typing experience. The ThinkPad X60 was shipped with Windows XP installed and because it is one of the last Windows XP machines, the operating system runs like a charm on both variants of the X60. Originally, of course, both X60s had a mechanical hard drive installed. But in order to determine the performance difference between the weakest and the strongest CPU available, I equipped both models with an SSD and the same amount of RAM. Since mechanical hard drives are nearly always the bottleneck when it comes to loading times, I would guess that with the original mechanical hard drive installed, the performance difference between both models in day-to-day -day use would be very small, if not to say non-existent. First of all, let's have a look at the boot time of the originally installed operating system Windows XP. What really stands out here is that the in theory slower ThinkPad takes the lead and actually boots faster. I surely did not expect this, especially since both laptops were updated to the same BIOS version and have the exact same settings applied. I can only guess that the existence of more features like for example the fingerprint reader results in a slightly longer time for the BIOS to sort everything out. When booted, both ThinkPads greet you with a fresh Windows XP install, ready to show the snappiness both machines can offer for day-to-day -day office tasks. The slower machine only has a single core CPU compared to a dual core CPU in the better equipped ThinkPad. Windows XP, however, can run on Pentium 2 processors and was clearly developed with a single core CPU in mind. And therefore, loading times do not differ much for lighter programs like Word or the web browser, for example. The difference in CPU performance shows, however, when it comes to extracting files, installing programs or loading demanding web pages. A huge benefit of the dual-core CPU also shows in the classic benchmark PCMark05. If you take a closer look, you can see that the cubes are moving faster on the better equipped X60. The 
The same can be observed clearly for the 2D window test that is shown here. The score reflects the observations and clearly declares the dual core X60 as the winner of this test. Both ThinkPads are perfect machines for older Windows XP gaming. But since the very limited capabilities of the integrated Intel GPU limits the playable PC games to older ones, the CPU in both cases is not the critical hardware part. Most of these games could run on a Pentium 3 or Pentium 4 processor. This results in almost the same gaming experience for all playable games with this Intel GPU. Back in the day, the difference between the more budget-friendly configuration on one hand and the top-of-the-line variant on the other is smaller than I expected, especially with the installed SSDs. If we go further in time and use Windows 7, one can clearly see the trend that the core to-do simply performs much better. Even with the longer BIOS boot screen, the dual core takes the lead here in boot time and the overall experience. If you want to use the weaker model today, it is yet another story. Web browsing nowadays is much more intensive for these old processors and what you see here actually is a very simple web page, which already shows a huge difference. Due to the lack of 64-bit support, the single-core Centrino processor can't even run most of the modern operating systems. Even that there's a Windows 10 for 32-bit systems out there, it would run terrible. In fact, the newest version of Windows 10 don't want to install anyway. In conclusion, I would say, if you like the display format and overall form factor of the ThinkPad X60 and want to use it nowadays, the configuration with a 64-bit dual-core processor is essential to run modern operating systems. With these processors, the ThinkPad X60 actually is a cool little Linux machine that can still be used nowadays. Just don't have too high expectations regarding the computing performance. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.